I'm Lucy Christian, and 20-something years ago, I stumbled into this industry. And in fact, I got an audition through my agent, and I got a small part in a show called Neo Ranga. And I went and did it, and I went home and told my roommate at the time, well, I suck at that. I don't know what I'm doing, and they're never going to have me back, but what a fun thing. And a couple weeks later, a show was being auditioned. It was called Full Metal Panic. And um, I booked the lead and was like, no, really, what are we doing? I don't know how to do it. <laughs> um, but I, rem I will never forget, I went to the internet, which was probably dial-up at the time. It was a long time ago. <laughs> and started looking around and found myself on Anime News Network and realized that people were going to not only watch the show, but review it. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. But that is how my career started in this industry. I, I started doing, I did Full Metal Panic, and that led to a ton of work for, um, at a place called ADV Films, back in the day, a whole bunch of shows. That was when the Clannades happened, and the Pre-Tears, and all of these wonderful, wonderful, like, great shows. And then, um, I was at a con as a guest, and I met Mike McFarland, and he said, hey, I've been watching Full Metal Panic. I really love your work. I'm uh, working on a little show called Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> Would you like to come up and do an episode character, and that can be your audition for Funimation? And I said, please, because everybody wanted to work on Full Metal Alchemist. And that's how I started working up there, which led to, I mean, everything. Nami, um, Honey Senpai, Ochako, Medusa, so many, so many, so many characters. So I've been doing voiceover in anime for 20-something years. I have managed to have a really long career in this industry, and it is pretty great. I've gotten to see anime go from being a very small niche market when we were, you know, doing DVDs, you know, four episodes per volume, <laughs> um, to what it is now, which is absolutely bonkers. Um, just crazy, crazy the shifts that have happened. But that's it, and you guys can ask whatever you want. Oh, that's amazing. So, because whatever. You have such an amazing perspective because you have been like fortunate enough to be doing this for so long, so I can only imagine the um, amount of stories that you have. Which I love the hair, by the way. Thank this you. This is a fantastic it's, choice. It's not like like Nami vibes and yes. vibes. Like, yes. Kind of both. Like, Suits you. Ten out of ten. Thank you. Love it. So please, I know we have been percolating some fantastic questions. If you've been with us before, if you never have been here, welcome. We've got the mic right in the center. I really encourage you guys get up, ask those questions. We yes. have plenty of time. Yes. Okay, let's see. Is this working? Yeah. Ben, it is, my friend. Huge fan of your work. Oh, thank you. I found your work on Ozzy Mangadado just absolutely hilarious. Oh, just it's oh, it's <laughs> so timeless. There was like a song that had to be like re-recorded at one point, like because in Japanese it was like Happy Birthday, but then you had to come up with like an original song or whatever. What was the process for doing that? <laughs> I remember that there was some reason. So Ozzy Mangadado. It's a super fun show. It's got a super weird vibe in the best way. Um, but it's so great. And me and Monica Rial play these teachers in the school, Yukari and Miyamo, and they are delightful. Yukari is just a basket case. She's so great. But yeah, there's this moment where she has to sing Happy Birthday, but there was some issue with we couldn't sing the real Happy Birthday. So, and the animation is just like, <laughs> You know, it's bananas. So I, what I feel like is we talked about how different should it be? Um, and how do you do it where the flaps don't really matter too much because the flaps were so weird anyway, anyway. But it came out being like, happy birthday, baby. Happy birthday to me. And just this ridiculous thing. And then at the end, she goes, happy freaking birthday to me. Like, so dumb. But it was so much fun. Um, and that was that whole show. Like, the whole show was like that. Was just having so much fun. So much fun. Yes. Thank you for
super essay. That show is so much fun. He is a professional. He's got it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, I told you two jokes downstairs, but in that time, yes. I remembered another one. Oh! Yes, I'm here for you. Okay. Okay. I got a job at the bank. I was fired on the first day. Lady said, check my balance. I pushed her over. <laughs> <laughs> An amazing delivery that on your part, my friend. That is yeah. right. Yeah. It was the not so, I pushed her over. I pushed her over. <laughs> pushed her over. Hello, little power. Can you do your honey senpai voice again? I can. Let's see. Remind me of what your name is. Isla. Isla, that's right. It's just you, me, and you, Sucha, and Isla. Everyone else is yeah. too busy. Also, thank you for the free autographs yesterday. Oh, you are so welcome. Honey and Senpai would eat all of the cake with you guys. Wanna have a piece of cake with me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Delicious. He is the baby. I love him so much. So, do you think that like you and your characters would get along, or like that they would like you? Do I think uh, which characters? Uh -huh. Any of them? Any of them? Or that they would get along with me? Yeah, or, like they would oh, like you. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> I think. Most of them would. Um, the ones that wouldn't. Uh, Alois Ooh. is so. He would not have the patience for me. <laughs> he he would be mean to me. <laughs> he would think I was weak. Um, I think. Um, who else would not like me? Let's see. Ooh. I think most of them would, because I'm pretty open-minded. Like, I don't know. I think most of them would. But on the spectrum of not liking, yes. who's who's the bestie? Who would you hang out with? Oh, you know, probably Ochago. Yes. yes. I think I would. <laughs> we are. I am not dissimilar. I cannot float people, <laughs> but we are not dissimilar in how we look at life and kind of, we are very alike. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hello. Um, so one of my favorite, one of my favorite voice performances of yours was you were in the narrator in Kamisama Kiss a long time ago. So I was wondering, I was wondering how was that type of performance for you in comparison to like a first, per, like a first person role where you're having to mouth Know, match the mouth flaps and everything else. So it's very freeing. Um, <laughs> and that was kind of the first time, I don't even think I read for that. I feel like Colleen cast me and she was like, I just think you can do this, do it. And I did not know that I could. But yeah, because that narrator is so fun. She talks over the whole show. And normally narrators don't do that. You have your intro and you have your little points that the narrator talks and that was not like that. She's just a, definitely a character in this story, sort of. Um, it was super fun, and I just got a kick out of it. I love that she was sort of the omniscient, um, cranky grandma. Um, you know, is how I kind of felt about her. Oh, Kami san and her friends are sitting here doing this thing, and blah, 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 and just always remarking on how silly they are and how dumb they are. Your fun energy was just perfect for that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you all. Yay. All right. First, I want to say thank you for coming to Chicago. Thank really appreciate you. it. I love Chicago, you guys. In the I summer, it's the best, too. Oh, I know. Yes. I have not yet been here in a winter. Uh -huh. Oh, no. no. Not at all. No. 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 You're like, no. Okay. All right. It, it was too great this year. There wasn't a lot of snow. I actually okay. like the snow. It was just too cloudy. Anyways, <laughs> my question is, um, you have a very impressive list of roles you've done. What do you think is the most underrated show that you've been on? Ooh, well, that's a great question. That is good. I do love it. Um, there are quite a few, but some of my personal favorites. My very first show ever that I fell in love with, I will stand it forever, is a little show called Princess Tutu. Um, it is so good. It is so good, you guys. It's like a dark German fairy tale. Give it a try. Um, Princess Tutu, I loved. 
A current show that I feel is undervalued, there's a show called Made in Abyss. And, right? I am the best robot boy that ever lived in it. His name is Reg. And it looks like it would be like a kid's journey show, but of course it's anime, so it is horrific. <laughs> like, you're like, oh, look at this kid buddy journey show. Oh, uh, 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 no. Like, so, and it's only gonna get like more that way because they're just going further down into the abyss. Um, but it's awesome. And the score is amazing. It's an original score by Kevin Pankin. It's chef's kiss. Um, what else do I think is underrated? Um, I guess those are the ones that come to mind right now. Thank you. Yes. Got a list of recommendations. Hello. Okay, that's good. Hello. Um, what would you say would be like the most underrated character in My Hero Academia? <gasps> oh, in My Hero. Oh, that's a good one. Um, so I'm just gonna say this is not quite answer your question, but. Minetta gets so much hate. <laughs> but, I, but I love him. Me too! I Me too! Him. Me too! Because we are, in, we are in high school. Yes! And there has got to be that guy, right? And, yes. and I love that Greena Pelosi. <laughs> when she first voiced him, she was hugely pregnant, which also sparked all kinds of joy from me. Like, anyway. So whenever I hear Minetta talk, I just think of Brina being like, Pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> um, so much fun, right? And paints him in a little different slant. Um, but underrated, I'm going to say, uh, oh, there's, I feel like you can make that case about so many people. But, so in the world of the villains, um, maybe he's not underrated, but I guess just recently because I just saw Kellen. Um, Overhaul, yes. as a villain, is one of my favorites, but he's not usually talked about. It's usually like, I always love Hero Killer Stain and these different people, but Overhaul, I hated him so much. But what he did to Eerie and all of these things, but when the thing happens to him that happens to him, I felt so bad for him. And I think that's just beautiful writing and creating on the, Jap the part of the Japanese. Um, say Overhaul. But so many people are underrated in that show. My another person I love is uh, Kirishima. Like yeah. Yeah. I love him. I love him. I think he has the best heart of almost any of us, right? He's just like, um, and I have that like for everybody on all sides. Thank you. I love your work. Good. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Uh, well, my question is, uh, well, first of all, it's a big honor to get to meet you. Thank you. And, and so sweet. Yeah, Nami and Ochako are one of my you know, favorite two you know, characters you've done, and also, you know, Honey Set By, because I've done, I've watched all of the, all of the, <laughs> Oh, well, right, you know, host club. Yes. I watch all of that, and every time whenever he's on, it's just so adorable. He fills the screen. Yes. I just love him. Yes. And, you know, what would you think would uh, have, you know, what each of your characters, if they had their own Pokemon, what would they be? <laughs> oh, well, I am not going to be the best one, so I'm going to have to take some audience help. Um, but I love that question. Only because I am not as well versed in the Pokemon world. But people are, my kids are. So help me, who would Nami most, what do you think? Ooh. What? Mudkip. What? Mudkip? No. Oh, they're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, this is a good Nami. This guy that's and, and uh, the colors and stuff too are definitely Nami energy. I'm here for this. What about Ochako? Hey, yes! Okay, that is what I was going to say. Yes. Yeah, um, that would, yeah, that would definitely be. Yeah, I could definitely see Ochako. You know, seeing having a whole bunch of like cute Pokemon, probably having some Eevees. One hundred percent. there. Yeah. One hundred percent. So that little thing that just happened there where it was like, this one, 
no, never. <laughs> so that is making me, reminding me, this week I was recording on one piece and our director was like, hey, have you seen all this online chatter about Gear 5 and all of this stuff? And I said, I have seen it. I've, been, I've seen it. And he goes, what do you think? And I said, I think it's awesome. People are arguing about one piece online. <laughs> it's so much fun. Like, I'm here. I'm here for all of it. It's very fun to watch. Hi, hi. Hello. Hello. Um, if it's okay to ask, I want to ask if I can record this question. It's for my friend. Sure. Um, it's awesome. It's nice to meet you. I am a big fan of my hero. Um, oh, thank okay. you. Yeah, and my friend Kira, she's a, you're her favorite. Like wow. her favorite. Oh, so sweet. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, All right. We have a, okay, I'll start. <laughs> but we have a big debate about this always back in school because we were roommates last semester. So she wanted me to ask you, do you think Uraraka is oblivious to her feelings to Deku? Well, that's, that's what I say, that if Uraraka is oblivious to her feelings for Deku, but, and, her, and what she would ask you is, do you think Deku is oblivious to his feelings for Uraraka? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we debate. So, yes. So, I think, um, I think the, I think the manga and everything supports that she is not oblivious. I think she does know, she makes the conscious effort to say, I'm going to put these feelings in my pocket. And we're going to put these away for a while, there's other stuff going on. And maybe that's, she doesn't want to explore them, I don't know. But she definitely seems to have that. I don't, I don't get to have that perspective from Deku. Um, so I'm not sure he has that. Um, he might be a little oblivious. But I think that, that what is real and what is as totally supported by canon is there is a true admiration and respect that both of them have. And that is same, like same, same, same. And there's that wonderful thing in the manga where, you know, that lovely scene they have where she's like, I'm just weird. I guess I'm just weird. And he's like, I'm weird too. And anyway, and it's a really precious scene. There's no declaration at all, but the creator is definitely at least laying the groundwork that these people I mean, if there is a ship in that show, <laughs> right? So I hope for that. But I also love that they are, um, I don't know. Who has seen season six? Has anybody seen season six? Like, the way she goes to bat for him. Uh, that hurts. Uh, <laughs> so good. So I don't think she's oblivious. Um, but she has enough of a level head as a high schooler to be like, there are bigger fish to fry right now in our world, and I'm gonna put that over here, and just do my job or whatever. She has won majority of the debates all of our friends. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> we always argue about it, and I already live like right next door to us, and she's like, what are you guys arguing about? I know. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm just like, she's looking at his and I'm always like, oh, it's the anime thing. Oh, I love like, it. Yeah. I mean, he's written her, I think, to not be oblivious, but you know, you're <laughs> hoping. You're gonna make her day. She's gonna. She's waiting. She was waiting for you to agree. Ah! <laughs> she just made her day when I showed you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think my hero from like the crazy fantastical universe that it is deals with so many like amazing real life things too. And if that is not one of them of being like represent the wrong time, there, and will there ever be a time? Correct. We just saw the last season. Will there ever be a time? Will there ever? Who knows? Right? Who? Absolutely. Who knows? I know. Right? So cute. Oh, Gary. So my question was, who was your favorite character to voice act for? My favorite character, okay, so I'm going to pick, because um, I have said, Duck from Princess Tutu was my first favorite ever. I stand that show so hard, you guys. There is video of me online on YouTube, all like ugly crying at the end of that series. Um, I didn't correct me, I loved it so much. Um, but other things I loved and had a ton of fun with, that some big, some small. Um, Yukari from Azumanga the Dark. Um, Tenma from School Rumble is one of the funniest shows I've <laughs> ever been a part of. It was so fun. Um, Ochako for sure. Nami is my adult person. I have been playing her for 16 years. Wow. And I I love her. <laughs> like, but she, and uh, I, so that is a whole thing. I feel like that's almost in a different category. Um, 
boy wise, I love Honey Senpai. Um, best, um, best uh, villain is Medusa from Soul Eater. Um, yes, I love poor Krona. I feel so bad for Krona. Um, Oh, there are so many. Goddess Hestia from Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up a Little Bit? It's super fun. She's super fun. What else? I, there are so many. So those are some that have been just so fun. So fun. Thank you. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi. Hi. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> took a picture with the Hoss cosplayer earlier. Oh! oh. Good! <laughs> yes! yes. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I, have, I have two questions, actually. One is, as we transition more into this sort of simul dub sort of, uh, what, what has that change been like for you who did not start with that being the case? Mm -hmm. The second one, my second one is, um, there's a lot of depth that I think really elevate the source material. The one that I called on yesterday, and I'll call it again, is the Revolutionary Girl Lieutenant Dub. It's like one of my favorite dubs of all time. Yeah. Is there a dub that you think really elevates the source material? Oh, okay. Wow. So to your first question, um, simul dubs have changed a lot. Um, if you can believe it, I remember being called for work and they would be like, hey, you have 15 hours for, let's say, Princess Tutu, you've got the whole month of April. And so, and we would book it. And now it might be, um, hey, you have, well, it just depends, right? You have two hours for NAMI and three hours for my hero or whatever that have to be done by Thursday. So, because they're releasing, how, how they're releasing, right, or whatever. So it has really changed. Production-wise, the production team has to be so much more uh, on the spot and fast. I don't think you can, it's not like you can sort of shepherd a title and be precious with it, because um, there's just not a lot of time. And some titles are gonna get the white glove treatment more than others. Toei, understandably right now, cares very much about um, uh, one piece. Right? So they care very much how that goes out. We are very careful with that title. My Hero is the same. Some of these shows are like that. Other shows, it's like, get it out, get it out. <laughs> like, and it's fast. And you're doing something that you can't even watch the whole show. A lot of times the directors are casting, not knowing what is going to happen. So you're just like, I hope I'm not making a terrible error oh in God. something because I don't know what's coming down the road. So that has definitely changed things. Um, you know, and on the positive side, people are getting content a lot faster. There's a lot less piracy, I think, um, which was the point. Like, that was one of the big points, was trying to close that gap between when the Japanese comes out and when the dub comes out so that people wouldn't go pirate everything, yeah. right? Um, so I think a lot of that has, has helped. But it's definitely changed things. You have to be available if you're going to be on a simul dev schedule. So like Crunchyroll, every season will be like, hey, all of our voice actors in our database, do you want to be considered for the summer season? Because you know if you say yes, you have to be available. And if you're doing a bunch of traveling or whatever, maybe you don't want to do that. Or, you know, it's just different. It's totally different. Um, your second question, remind me what it was? Um, there are certain devs that really elevate the source material. Do you have one in particular you recommend? So, I don't know about eclipsing the source material, but I think some are really on par. I think that my hero dub is on par. The Japanese is great. We always think they're great. I mean, that's what's in my ear. That They've been in my ear 20 years. Um, so all we hope for is to be hopefully on par, right? So, um, but I think that my hero dub is so strong. I, I honestly, I think the um, uh, the One Piece dub is super strong. Like, and not always, right? When we first started, we picked up in the 100s episodes because we were taking over from four kids, and that's where they were, and they were on a broadcast schedule, and we did not know. We were running from studio to studio, going, "How are you saying this island name? <laughs> Who are you? Like, what? 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 And Colleen, because we're both watching the show with our kids right now, 
Um, so she has gotten to Skypea where we started with her son Rhodes, and she was like, oh my gosh, I sound, I can tell how my voice changed because that's where we started the show, right? It's just funny. Um, but overall, I think the debit's very strong. Um, what out there? But there are a ton. I think there are a ton that are really, really very good. Somebody recently shared something with me on uh, from Black Butler, and I was like, I am so proud of us. That is great. What a great job that is. You know, so there are definitely ones I feel like it's not going to, it fits. The voices yeah. fit. You know, those are just them. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I was wondering, do you ever read the, uh, do, do you, for any of your uh, voice ones that you're being reoccurring, do you ever read ahead or do you want to be surprised? I sometimes, I hardly ever read ahead, but things are often spoiled for me, which is fine. Um, I like to be surprised, but I, you rarely are these days, right? I have made my peace with that, that is fine. Um, most, some of us do read ahead, like Justin Briner, he's always, he always reads ahead. <laughs> Colleen, it tries to always read ahead and stuff. Um, like, like I know some stuff that's coming down for the next season of my hero that is like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? Um, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. Um, but I didn't read it myself. It found me. It found me. Yes. Nothing like opening up Twitter and being like, ah! Like, you know, I can't, I can't believe it. But I, you know, and I get it. I mean, I know yes. people will get mad all day long about not putting trigger warnings or whatever it is, or spoiler alerts or whatever. But I get it. We are in this world where if you like something, you want to talk about it. And people are going to go to the internet. So a part of that is I've signed up to attend Twitter every yes. now and then. Yes. I, I may come across something that's going to spoil me. Y'all, the conversations about quirks we have, you don't even know. Um, so I like so many of the quirks and how creative everybody is with creating these quirks. But a part of me wants twice as quirk. I want to be able to duplicate. Yes. Like, I think that would be super cool. Um, I'm just going to say twice right now because I'm into it. Also, <laughs> twice. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, first of all, I just want to say I am a huge fan of your voice in Yami. Aww. And my best friend is a huge fan of your voice in Loloka, so thank you for Bless. both of us. Thank uh, you. My question is do you, uh, if it, uh, do you do any voice acting for video games? Uh, yes, I do. Oh. Um, not as many games as I have of uh, anime, but yeah, um, I am, look, now I'm like, what, 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 what have you done? So way back in the day, my first big video game thing was uh, Dance Dance Revolution for the Xbox 360. No. Y'all. No. Yes. And it was so fun. And it was the whole, I mean, the thing about video game work is usually it is an Excel spreadsheet. And you are just going down, doing series of attacks, this and that, you know, whatever. And so for that, it's like workout mode. And, uh, you know, <laughs> and the funny part is that I did that. I flew to New York to do it with Michael Center Nicholas back in the day. And um, so much fun. And I was in Best Buy, and I heard my voice, and I was like, what? And it was the game. And I was like, ah, it's my voice on the game. And then I, like, tried to do the little, you know, because they have the display and you can play it. And I told myself, I was like, uh, well, I can't play the game for you. Like, heckling myself for being bad and whatever. Um, but that was my first big game thing. And since then, it's been like, oh, my gosh. Um, uh, we did the One's Justice game. I'm in a Dragon Ball game. I'm in... Um, Borderlands. I was one of the Gage voices. Um, I did. Um, ti I was uh, Doc Master in Tiny Tina's Wonderland, and um, 
uh, Phantom Breaker Omnia, and, and some other ones that I can't remember. But, wow. Yeah. But video game work, the only difference with that is literally, most of the time, for me, it's a literal an Excel spreadsheet. And you're going, okay, so this is her series of punches, getting punched. So it's going to be getting slapped, getting hit in the nose, getting punched in the stomach, getting knocked out. So you have to, so you're just like, <laughs> right? That's all you're doing. It's a series of, that, series of, of reactions. And then it's you punching people. Or, anyway, that's what video game work is. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, wild. So if you want to do voice work, just sit in the mirror and like, imagine yourself <laughs> hitting, tripping, you know, whatever. Yes. Um, I wanted to know if Class A and Class B hung out, who do you think uh, Uraraka or yourself would become friends with from Class B? Oh, I love that question. Um, who is the mushroom girl? Oh, no. oh, I think Kanoko's her name. I love her. I love her. And I can see Otako being like, wow, you're so cute. Wow. And your quirk is wild. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say her. I love her. But I, but honestly, Ochako was so easygoing. Like she would befriend a lot of people. You know, she would just be like, I mean, I know we're competing, but hey, that's a really nice. She's just a good girl. She's just good. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. I, um, I have a mommy question. Yes. So if Nami met Bella Mir again, how do you think a conversation would go down? Oh my god. I think Nami would I think Nami would burst out crying, which is so unlike her. But I think she would. One of the pretty like sweetest scenes, the whole Arlon thing, right? Is just what a backstory. Um there's that moment before Nami leaves when she goes back to the kitchen and she has the conversation with Bellamere's ghost. <laughs> you know, Bellamere is like, she's talking to Bellamere and just saying, I think I'm gonna be okay. I'm, it's time for me to go. And then Bellamere pushes her out the door, like the spirit of Bellamere is pushing her out the door, which is like, ah. Uh. Um, I think Nami, if she ever saw her again, would cry and thank her. I think Nami has, has grown up enough to be able to say all the things that she feels bad about from when she was little with Bellamere for, you know, just being a kid and being selfish and kind of dumb and as kids are. I think she would say thank you for choosing me and bringing me up to know what a strong woman looks like, right? Like, thank you, badass. Yes. Like, yes. in the best way, in the best way. Thank you. I, that's my favorite thing. I think we can all agree as a One Piece fan is when a friend starts the show and they're like, oh, such a tragic backstory. Oh, Zoro. And you're just like, just wait. <laughs> Hang out. Oh, boy. that Just wait. Every time. <laughs> that's right. time. Well, my kids, I've told some of you, oh. if you've come to my table, watching it with my kids, their whole vibe at the beginning of the show was, why is Nami such a bad friend? Oh. <laughs> oh. And I said, I mean, you're not wrong, but... Wow, give mom, your character's a jerk. Give her a minute. Yeah. I was like, give her a minute, you know? Give her a minute. Just give her a minute. see where she comes from. And sure enough, like we're watching and the Arlong arc is happening and they're like, and she's in the street. And as soon as Nami starts raising that um, knife, both of my kids were like, no. <laughs> and I went, oh, welcome to West Peace. Like, it's so good. It's so good. So now that we are not in the era of watching crunchy anime in like five parts on YouTube in a little screen window, yes. Um, is there any of the older animes that you have done that you would love to see get like revamped and <gasps> redone? So many. I mean, honestly, yeah. Um, that fruits basket got a second treatment. Like that. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like I would love to see some of your older animes get that because I've like grown up watching a lot of the older animes that you've been in, and yes. I'm like. I want to see these like in crisp new yes. form. So any of us would give a lot to be able to 
do more of any or one. Oh. Yeah. 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 Please, we've been begging for season two for so long. Any of it, right. Like, just more would be really, really great. Although I think it just being the one season sort of adds to its, like, our sort of fervent love of that show. It's, that's, it's like, that's all you get, <laughs> is this little magical weird thing that is not like anything else. Um, that for sure. Um, let's see what, I'm sure there's more. Um, there are a bunch of shows that I did, because I did a whole bunch really fast back in the day, that I would love to revisit again. There is, was one called Pre-Tier that I loved. It was my favorite magical girl show. Um, and it's kind of a reverse harem, seven dwarfs thing going on. So good. The transformation scenes were so pretty. Um, there was one called, um, oh crud, uh, what's it name? What's the name of it? Um, shoot. Oh, oh, Mr. Dark, um, Rika, and, oh shoot, I can't think of it. But yes, there are many, there are many that I think it would be super fun to revisit. And it's fun because you hear that some things are coming back. Like, I heard that Soul Leader might be getting a second treatment. I am so excited more, about this. Like, <laughs> bring it, right? Okay, there's rumors that it's going to be more loyal to the manga, too, so I'd really love to see Medusa and Krona's interactions because they're wow. so different in the manga to the Yes. Game. I think, and I would love that, because stylistically, I thought that show was so cool, too. It's just, and the opening, is one of the openings that I will never fast forward through. Because I just love all them dancing around and Medusa There's being the, like, like, meme of, like, somebody playing, this isn't allowed to be played in my car, and then it's a car, like, zooming off the freeway, going, yeah. like, 90. <laughs> that's the soldier opening. Yes. <laughs> but that's some. Um, I don't know. I'm sure there's more. I'm sure there's some. Thank you very much. Thank you. We've got about 13 minutes left, my friends. So I will ask everyone, make sure that you pick your best question. And I will go fast. Hi. What is your favorite moment when you're playing as Nami? My favorite moment when I'm playing as Nami. Uh, the whole show, the Arlong arc is very special to me. Also because, like I said, we recorded it out of order. So we were in the 100s when we started. And when we went back and I saw Nami's backstory, like a year and a half, two years after we had been in it. And I went, oh my God, this is who this person is. Oh, and this is why she'll follow Luffy to the ends of the earth. Oh, like it just made so much more sense. Um, but most recently, I will just say, um, I had a blast. We did it in the pandemic. Whole Cake Island was our pandemic arc. And it was 100% delightful. I loved it. Nami with a Vivra card is my energy. <laughs> like, wield it, and she's so much fun. So much fun. It was so fun. And we were doing it in the pandemic from home. It was bananas, anyway. Hey, Dad, but can you ask two quick questions? Yeah. First one is about what you said about the deck. How was that uh, when you did your voice performance for Uraka when for the One Justice 2 game? <gasps> Dude, because that was. Because I remember that was the pandemic and yes. that's the night after the first DLC character. We were so stoked because they released that as a patch. And because it, it wasn't on there at first, it was just the Japanese. Um, I, I wish they would do the same thing for the um, the One Piece game. Def I, I just wish. But it was so much fun. Yeah, we did it over the pandemic. I was like, can I really yell these things in my closet? <laughs> and the sound is okay. And yes. But so fun, so, so, so fun. We all had a blast. And then when it dropped, we all got to share it. And my kids were playing at my, just in case you wonder, Otako is not their favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever. Yeah. Uh, the other question I want to ask was, firstly, like, uh, between yeah, the two smaller roles I could think of, uh, Hestia and uh, Stella Familiar for sure, but not any interesting stories about them? About Stella or which one? Hestia. Or Hestia. Any funny stories about them? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, the funniest story? I mean, not really. Only that, especially with the goddess, because that's more recent. Um, we have had, uh, whenever I go in to record for her, we have games to see who, can, who comes up with the funniest names to call. Um, little Miss Wallet, what's her, who's it? Yes. And I usually win. Oh, I was the one that came up with Wallen What's Her Who's It. So, listen here, Wallen What's Her Who's It. How dare you? Yes. <laughs> How dare you? Bell. Anyway. 
I don't know. If, if the manga or anything ever gives us a clue, you can tell me. Cause I've missed it, if that's true. Uh, okay, thanks. Thanks! I like your shirt. Oh, Hi, Lucy. Hi, Good Bobby. to see you again. Hey. Hi. So, I've heard you in so many roles throughout the many years I've been watching anime, from the early 80s stuff to the current trend. And I was just curious if there was like any particular role that you yourself truly enjoyed a lot, but you don't really hear it get talked about in like cons like this one or anyone else, like one you really enjoyed, like sort of underappreciated, like you wish that some more people would talk about. So there is one, but it is not for children. <laughs> not for children. Emphasis. Um, well, the thing is, is we all know, right? I do, and in fact, I'll say, I think one of the reasons My Hero is such a great show is it's such a general audience show. And a lot of anime just is not like that. Um, this one is definitely not like that. But my dear friend, Chris Ayers, who passed away, what, a year and a half ago now, directed me, um, Greg Ayers, his brother, and Chris Patton in a show called Merriman Daikon Brothers. And it's not for kids. <laughs> <laughs> but it is so fun and funny and wrong. And it's an anime musical. It's a musical, you guys. Um, not, it's not okay, but it was so fun. And so I know why I don't hear about it, because for a very certain kind of audience, right? Or it's just not for kids. But it's so funny and fun, and I think you will hear a lot of joy if you watch it, right? And if you're a, a Watanabe fan, like he's in it, um, he drew himself in it. <laughs> it is hilarious. Um, but that was the first one that came to mind, and Chris did that, and he cast us all, and we just had a blast. So that's one. Rest there are many, peace, but that's what. Rest in peace, Chris. Rest in peace. He Thank was you an angel, you guys. He's an angel. He was just a darling, darling man. So talented. Thank you, Lucy. About two more minutes. Robin! <laughs> my sister! Yes. Um, my question is, if you could spend 24 hours with any One Piece character, who would it be, and what would you guys do? <sighs> Luffy. <laughs> I want to, I mean, Colleen and I have talked about this. We have had these talks. Oh, I'm getting her clipped. Oh. <laughs> so, one of the best things about the show, and I, again, if I've said this to you this weekend, forgive me, but what a time to be a One Piece fan. Yeah. Like, I cannot believe that after 16 years of my little experience with the show, that so many people are coming into it and discovering it. Like, what? Um, but Luffy is magic, and there is a reason. Like, Oda has created him to be, he's the only person I've ever seen who is 100% exactly where he is in the moment. Like, there's always the grand line, there's always the one piece, but, in fact, but he's right here with you. Like, no matter what, everything is right here, and he's 100% into it, whatever it is. And there's this childlike magic that he has. Um, even back in the beginning when none of us know if we can trust each other, he has inherent trust in all of us from the get-go. Like when it's not deserved, Nami doesn't deserve his trust and faith that he gives her. Um, she's a real jerk to him. Um, I don't know, I would spend 24 hours with the rubber boy. Thank you. <laughs> For sure. This may be our last question, my friends. I'll, I'll tell you what, just hang out there just in case. Okay. Oh, you're really good. Just, yes, so, yes. Voice acting question. Do you or have you ever used a trigger phrase to get into a voice? A, a, like, a trigger? Like a help? Is that what you meant? Is that what you yeah, mean? something like that. Yes. You guys, you all know anime is replete with names. <laughs> we say everybody's name 50 million times. But it is the best little trick to get into the thing. So, like, Ochako, all I have to do is go, um, hey, Deku? Aww. And I go, well, there she is. Like, oh, Deku, you're such a Deku. Like, it's just right there. Um, Nami is Luffy. Like, it just falls into a thing, and you're like, and it's a little naggy, and whatever. But that is where she lives. Um, Medusa, obviously, poor Krona. 
Oh, Stein. Like, it's, that's what it is. That's what it is, it's the names. All right, thank you. Um, honey, how do he, like, Like that, and then I'll be like, call your mother, or don't if it's complicated. 